they're, I don't believe they're your standard axial windows. I think they may turn this way. Um, and they don't have as much, they don't have as much load. Um, if you're thinking of mounting them on a house, this doesn't look at that. It doesn't look at that. At this time. I don't think there's, there's any out there that would be able to be mounted on a, a wood frame house at this time. I would think not either. The vibration, you know. So you're, you're not, definitely not talking about these little small wind generators you might find on a sailboat or something. No, 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 God, no, no. We're talking something a little bit more substantial. Mm -hmm. But it also encompasses, you know, we got height restrictions in town that they can't go over 30 feet. The 400 foot if you got a tree in the yard that's 30 feet, you've got to get above that to catch the wind. Right. So you can see it's 10 feet. miles away. So. So. Okay. Uh, any other questions on this? I assume that uh, we'll make a decision at town uh, meeting and the hearing this presentation. And we've already uh, voted to uh, recommend a town meeting. CPC will be presenting this article. Article 22, restrictions on water use and violations and penalties. That's not that's, uh, that's, that's us. That's not that. Is there anything else? DPW. Uh, Chair? Yes. If you look at Article 5, that's the, the wastewater scope of work. That, uh, okay. I need that some uh, very definitely. Um, the, the board, yeah. first of all, is recommending it. Oh. I didn't you know if you want to go through it, she's <laughs> more of an expert on it than I am. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll, I'll take them out of order. Oh. Um, well, basically, what this does is we created a scope of work to have an economic impact analysis completed um, that will determine what the tax revenue is existing in town um, in the highway business district, which most of you know is the 28, and the industrial office district, which is primarily Congress Street and the Bay Two Garden Center. And the scope of work will then allow us to hire consultants to generate. Um, future tax impacts of what would happen in those areas if the road was installed there. And the reason why we're doing this is because, um, as you all know at this point, without sewer in town, um, it appears, and I say it, it appears because we don't have any definite analysis completed, but <coughs> it would appear that we're at somewhat of a commercial uh, lag when we are compared to other communities that have a large stretch under 20 years, like Reading or Andover. So that was, um, for those in the audience that are unfamiliar with what we're talking about here is that the board has uh, put on one of its top priority lists is to move forward with uh, wastewater and also to deal with the water issues that we face specifically this summer and as a result uh, uh, we decided we need an economic analysis of what wastewater or sewer would do to our business commercial tax base. And uh, by hiring a professional to do this, uh, uh, we would be uh, in a better position to present a proposal to move forward with wastewater to the community. Uh, we uh, plan on funding this. It's approximately uh, 15, uh, 50. 50. Fifty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand dollar expense. It will come out of funds that are available as part of uh, uh, the agreement uh, uh, that went forth on the sale of the uh, half of the Berry property. That was funded by uh, Lincoln Properties, the developer of Edgewater Estates. The amount of money we received for wastewater. As part of that agreement was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. There's a balance in that account of somewhere around four hundred thousand, Greg. Right. Yep. And we would be using the forty or fifty thousand dollars from that account. Any questions? Uh, which board member wants to present this article? I'm willing to do it. Mr. Prisco. Any others that, uh, while you're here, Heidi or <coughs> All right. 
Maybe I will start at the beginning then, and uh, could, I, could I suggest? Why don't we find out who's interested in which ones? And I know sure. you, yeah, so you have some, you have some chamber of commerce people outside that have been waiting. I think uh, yes. on the snow removal one, okay. and then uh, I don't know who else that's has an interest that's in That's fine. Why. Sure. What other? Yeah. Are there any anyone here in the audience interested in any one of these articles? Barbara, you look perplexed. I mean, what are we here for? Is that your yeah, or if you're here specifically uh, uh, for a particular article, we'll try to move them up on the front rather than those that are no one's here for. Okay. Well, um, citizens. Uh, citizens. Citizens. Yes. Citizens. Well, you get chamber, chamber people interested in the. May as well tackle that one. Okay. Uh, which one is that? Ten. Article right. ten. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Right. Uh, no, what was 15, the other? 15. 15. 15. Okay. Page 10. Page 10. Okay, so uh, for those that have just joined us, we are going to uh, discuss Article 15. Which is? Which is what, Bob? Which is uh, the general bylaws regarding snow removal, streets and sidewalks, section 158.9. The see if the town will vote to amend section 158.9 of the Code of the North, uh, Town of North Reading general bylaws by modifying the requirements of property owners to keep sidewalks free of snow and ice and further that non substantive changes to the numbering of of this bylaw be permitted in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the Code of North Reading or what it will do in relation to it too. And at this point, uh, uh, yeah, everything is up in the air still. Uh, I had suggested one is that we perhaps clarify by meets and bounds <coughs> the, uh, 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 the specifics of those uh, locations that this bylaw was meant to uh, cover, and uh, I don't have a record of that at this point. I don't know if any, uh, Dick, if you've had an opportunity to put that together. <coughs> and Heidi? No, I was working on it. I think the McIntyre thing has been <coughs> Okay. Uh, the issue last, first of all, uh, in history, and I, I'm not sure I have a, this 100%, but uh, Back in uh, 2000 or thereabouts, this bylaw was uh, put on the books, voted uh, by town meeting uh, as a result of uh, the uh, construction project on 62, and I think it was brought forth by uh, the uh, people representing uh, the handicap, which would be uh, Commission on Disabilities. Commission on Disabilities. Commission on Disabilities, and as a result. Uh, it, it was voted uh, and approved uh, by town meeting and uh, subsequently had not been enforced up until Mr. Yule brought that to the board's attention a year ago. So here we are, we're back at it again. Uh, winter is uh, coming, hopefully slowly, but <laughs> it's sooner or later we'll be here and we'll be back again uh, with the issue of uh, what are the responsibilities of the business owners uh, clearing the sidewalks? And then the issue that came up last year was since some of the uh, sidewalks on specifically on Route 28 uh, are uh, town owned. And, uh, those were at the time were being ignored. So we have business owners on 28, but we have a stretch of sidewalk that encompass business owners, apartments, and town-owned property. Maybe some other things that there's some <laughs> we have. And there's, some res there's some residents, too, isn't Some it? residents and also uh, some, uh, some sidewalks owned by the state, I would imagine. Or Frontage. not currently. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, currently owned, but no business in place, let's say. So, where do we go from here? Mr. Vino. Just a question to my name, Mr. Chair. 
Um, Aren't you lucky you're off the board on this <laughs> issue? It's not easy to get back here. So, um, this proposal, and I have the word all written here, is this for all sidewalks, all private property sidewalks, or just along Route 28? This is, uh, I, I don't have in front of me the bylaw. I, in fact, I, tonight I went looking, uh, I could have brought my book with business. Uh, I, I think when it was business. originally proposed to be amended. In the business district. Be, well, it was to be originally all sidewalks, but. It says private property. It's no average. This is Sarah and I have a meeting with highway business and the uh, change of business districts. We've had three meetings in the no, last six, eight months. months. The research that was done we reviewed bylaws from other communities. Some of those unique bylaws seem to suggest that it's really focused on the high traffic business district. So after our last meeting, which was about two weeks ago with the chamber, the thought that came out of that meeting was that we limit this to essentially areas on Route 28. And at that point, it was turned over to the administration to hopefully get a draft done of this amendment for purposes of town meeting. In October. So if, if I'm hearing you right, Mr. Delaney, it's not going to be for all private sidewalks. No. Or am I hearing no, you? Not residential. He, not before, residential. Joe, if you call before, it, it, was, it was highway business <laughs> and, and general business. God bless you. you know, well, so it was highway business and general business is what, what we were enforcing and talking about before. It wasn't in residential neighborhoods. No, I know that, Steve, yeah. Mr. O'Leary. No, no, I'm just trying to get clarified because this says uh, the obligation of private property owners to remove. Now, is that going to mean people not on Main Street? I'm not saying I'm opposed to this. What I'm saying is I don't want to see us create a nightmare for enforcement. That's, that was the general. We did that last year. That was the general. <laughs> Right. But, but it was a legal nightmare last year. It would be legal this year here, too. But I mean, it, I, I guess if it's not for the neighborhood sidewalks, you know, it may fly. No, it wasn't intended to be for the neighborhood. But, but it doesn't sidewalks. stipulate that, Mr. Well, Chair. Well, this is not the language of. The, oh, okay. But this, is the, this is kind of the general placekeeper that had to be okay. general enough right. to cover whatever was proposed. And we haven't made enough progress on coming up with the exact language oh, to make the right, modification. Right. I, I, Keep in mind, there is an existing bylaw, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that covers businesses. Yes. It doesn't cover private property. Yeah, commercial property. Right. And then, <coughs> uh, you know, an interesting thing that occurred recently was a, a ruling by the uh, Mass Supreme Judicial Court, right, that kind of focused on everybody. Yes. Right? But that's also something that the town would have to adopt and we're not prepared Proposing that at this point, it was two things. One, the recent case that came down extended liability. Before it was, if it was man-made created in terms of the way you improperly okay. shoveled or iced your sidewalks, and someone slipped and fell, there's liability on that particular property owner or person who did that work. Uh, now they're saying if it's God-given and someone slips and falls, you may be responsible. If someone slips and falls on your property regardless of whether or not you shoveled it, shoveled it or not. But there's also, state legislature recently passed in the spring a new statute, Body U. Um, it's a local acceptance statute, typical as statutes are in Massachusetts, not clearly written. Uh, but we've uh, <laughs> been given advice by town council that they do not recommend communities accepting that statute. They feel as though our bylaw, it's already been approved, our bylaw is valid as is, but I think the consensus in the community and on this board is that that bylaw needs to be tweaked as a result of what happened last year, putting extra burden on the police department. But uh, those there's a couple issues ongoing, the recent case law, the statute, um, and the fact that our bylaw, our bylaw itself needs to be tweaked. And we don't have anything yet that's quite in a draft form for us to review. And, and if we don't by next Monday night, we're most likely going to pass over it, which means that the existing bylaw would stand. Any other questions? In the back. Um, I would, um, Secretary Curio from the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce, 
I would encourage the board, you know, to if possible, I know you've worked toward this end, 